to show me around. So welcome to Sham Shui Po. This is the Sham. This is a really Sham. old, old neighborhood. Uh, it's been around for a long, long time and the population has grown older with it. So um, with that, basically the food that has to cater to this older population can't be so creative. It has to be really, really traditional. It has to stick so, to its roots. Exactly. So here is a great place to come to find very, very traditional food. And other than food here, uh, very important to mention, there's a very famous, world famous computer center. And also if you're looking for material or sewing machines or buttons, this is the place to come because there's streets that are just like, there's one street that's like the button street. They'll specialize in their particular wear. Exactly. Right. I didn't know that you had to buy so many buttons, but there's a street, <laughs> if you want to look for buttons, there's, there's a whole a street. There's a market out there. Exactly. So what, what are we going to check out? And we're going to check out tofu. So right now, tofu so we and can street scope food. out some computers and some tofu. Right. All right, cool. Sounds good. We're focusing on the kind of local, everyday delicacies that Hong Kongers have grown up eating. And the epicenter of everything in this shop, Kung Wo, is soy. Okay, so this is a sweetened, silky bean curd, okay? And we eat it with a very specific kind of sugar. It's like a red sugar. We call it red sugar. Red sugar. But it's actually yellowish. <laughs> uh, and then we, this is only to be eaten with sweetened silk and tofu. Um, and here we have a very Hakka from the Hakka region, from the Hakka people. I'm a Hakka. Um, and so what we take, we take minced pork and sometimes pork minced with some fish and we stuff it into the tofu, into the hard tofu, and then we fry it. Has an oatmeal slash porridgey kind yeah. of taste, and Very this earthy. this actually the sugar tastes like raw brown sugar to me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost like if you liquefied porridge and gave it the consistency of uh, Greek yogurt, without that silky smoothness. Mm. Yeah, so I love this. All right, so I got the know. perfect description for this. This is like a. Uh, Chinese horchata, like the Mexican drink. Where, yeah. This is totally a Chinese horchata. It literally would be because the Chinese version of soy milk, it's actually very, very much like horchata is. It's a, li a little bit more like a milk yeah. and less like a cream. Yeah, yeah. And it's less rich and it's more like a like very drinkable. Super refreshing, um, man. Super and very refreshing. refreshing. Soft, yet chewy, it's got that bouncy factor. The bouncy thing is going on. So this is a, a firm tofu, much like what we have over here. After it's, after it's sort of um, the whey is being cut, the tofu gets pressed a little bit harder. And so it forms this sort of firmness to it. So you can take this and fry it like they have done. The variety of textures that you can gain with this, is, it's pretty amazing. I mean, you have a nice refreshing drink, yeah, you have absolutely. silky. And then it becomes soft and bouncy and slightly chewy. Yeah. And I mean, and you can go sweet to savory. Now, it should be noted that these are actually quite enjoyable. But I typically avoid soy products for their, how shall I say, uh, estrogenic properties. It's time for dessert. And once again, the staple ingredient is something cheap, utilitarian, and most importantly, filling. Red bean. That's such a weird consistency. So it's a really weird consistency. So this is this is their, what they're famous for. It almost feels like it's going to bounce this is, back. Yeah, it, it actually is not as bouncy, this one. It, it would actually crumble in your hands. Oh. So it, it's steamed in this bowl, and then you take some to, some sort of skewers, and you sort of just like stick it out, and it oh, becomes yeah, like a, a lollipop. And it's got Ooh. red beans and brown sugar and rice flour in there. And it looks like it's bouncy, but it'll actually break off break and off. crack. It's unlike anything you've ever eaten, I'm sure. Very light tones of peanut butter somehow. Okay. A little bland. A little bland, that's for sure. Taste the red beans for sure. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, it's just really flat. So this is all sesame, black sesame. 
Um, and the, the great thing about this is they do it in layers. You want to be for I can nine see the layers. striations, yeah. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. that that's, that's like craft right there at the end of the day. So what you do, because it's nine layers, right? And nine in Chinese language signifies longevity. And if you eat sesame, it's really good for you, really good for your heart. We believe in fiber and all that. So longevity is key. Look how beautifully that, that layer comes out. I think the winner is just the way it feels in your mouth, the consistency. It's not really very precise in terms of flavor. It's a little mellow, just like yeah. this. But I think the, the fun part of this is the way it feels in your mouth. Like yeah, the and, but you and definitely the, get the earthiness of the sesame. It's definitely earthy, yeah. The sesame flavor really comes out. Mm -hmm. All right. This is really, really fun. And right. basically is, it's, a, it's like a dim sum dough that they make out of, um, of glutinous rice flour. And then they put some red bean paste inside and then they deep fry it. Very chewy. Oh, look at that. So this is my piece, that'll be yours. With red bean With red stuffing. bean inside. And this is my favorite. It's got about a thousand calories a bite, but it is my favorite. Mm. You're right. This is the best one. It has to be. It's deep fried. Mm. It's got to taste the best. Mm. The flavors are subtle, mild, and the fun dessert treat lies in the myriad of textures in your mouth. Because they're certainly not sugary sweet as most of the world expects its desserts. Both these spots in Cham Shui Po are Michelin Guide Recommend. They've won this recommendation because of their dedication to their craft. I've dined at a Michelin one-star restaurant. I've experienced a Michelin recommended shop. Next, Christian and I head into the Langham for an appointment at their famous Cantonese restaurant, Michelin three-star rated Tang Court one of the five Cantonese restaurants in the world to receive this accolade. In order to understand the depth of this achievement, we're signed up for a set menu. Whatever Chef Wang Chi Fai has in mind for us, we're strapped in and we're ready for the experience.